My family and I just returned home from a vacation, our first trip away after a truly challenging couple of years. During the trip I made 360 or so photos on film, and I learned some lessons in the process. Some of these lessons I've known for years, others I've only recently discovered. Some were learned the easy way, and others were a bit more painful. As I'm always trying to help others through my website, I figured I'd write an article on the lessons I learned, so here they are. Everything that I learned shooting my vacation entirely on film. Lesson number one, expired film is terrible. Here I am complaining about expired film again. This is nothing new. I complained about it in an article in the summer of 2018, where I was on the beach suffering a terrible fever and shooting Konica VX film. In another article, I satirically skewered shooting expired Polaroid film, and only one guy in the comments missed that the entire thing was a self-deprecating joke. Even when expired film doesn't totally ruin every photo that I make, as was the case in an article last summer when I shot Kodak Supra, I made sure to whine and cry about shooting this stuff. Every time I shoot expired film, I think I've learned my lesson. Why then did I think it would be a good idea to bring nothing but expired film on the first vacation that my family and I would take in over two years? Oh uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's right. It's, it's because I'm very stupid. And so it was last month that my few brain cells and I packed my carry-on bag with ten rolls of various types of expired film just prior to boarding a plane to Florida. Slide film, C41 color, black and white. I brought it all and shot it all during my time away with the family, and just yesterday my scans arrived from the lab by email, and you'll never guess what happened. Actually, yeah, you, you probably guessed. I was disappointed. The lab technician's notes said it all. You are working with some old film here, so expect the usual. Low contrast, tons of grain, color shifts, and bad exposures. I opened the folders, and sure enough, I found low contrast, tons of grain, color shifts, and bad exposures. Over the next five hours, I did everything that I could to salvage the best of the shots in Lightroom, and some of the photos have ended up, I guess, fine? I might even like some of them, but getting these shots to where they are now took major adjustments and a lot of time. And there's no escaping the truth that the shots that I like would have been liked a lot more had they been shot on new film or with a digital camera. They'd be crisp and sharp and pop with vibrancy and beautiful colors and tonality and show ultra-fine grain and can you imagine? Well, you'll have to imagine because the shots I got ain't it. Expired film can, of course, be a beautiful medium, but its unpredictability and unreliability, its extremely low hit rate, and its high cost, uh, that, that brings up why are people selling expired film for more than fresh film, make it a no-go for me in any but the most frivolous situations. I should have learned my lesson years ago, and maybe I have after this trip. Expired film sometimes, but never when the photo matters. Lesson number two, one lens only, please. Uh, just in case you're wondering that. That subtitle is, in fact, a Hunt for Red October reference. From one hard lesson to one which I've finally internalized after seven years of shooting cameras professionally, I only need one lens. Over the past seven years, I've packed my bags for trips like this one with way too many cameras and lenses. I'd bring the wide-angle prime for that perfect landscape photo, the standard fast 50 for when the light gets low. I'd pack the telephoto zoom to take a specific shot of a specific lion on the Animal Kingdom safari, knowing well that the lazy king of the jungle would be sleeping under a shady rock just out of sight every time our ridiculous safari truck rambled on by. I recall one year I even brought a tilt-shift lens, which sat unused in the air-conditioned hotel room for the entirety of the trip. Well, this time I brought one lens, just one, for ten days away from home, and I couldn't have been happier with that choice. Less to pack, less to carry, less to worry about, and as long as I chose the right lens, the right focal length, I'd miss nothing by bringing just one chunk of glass on a family trip. It took me a while to find my single favorite lens from within my favorite focal length, but now that I have, there's no going back. I'll never travel without this lens, and more importantly, I'll probably never travel with anything else. Lesson number three, slide film is the best film. Experience has taught me, as mentioned in lesson number one, that expired film is bad. And in my experience, the worst of the bad is expired slide film. I don't think I've ever made a single good photo from a roll of expired slide film, and I've tried many times. Which is why when I was shooting the single roll of slide film which I brought with me on this particular vacation, I actively thought with every shot, ah, another terrible photo. 
The phrase became my mantra, repeated with a psychotic, unhinged smile. Another terrible photo. Another terrible photo. Well, time has once again proven that I am, in fact, a moron. The best photos from my ten rolls of film all came from that single roll of expired slide film. It was a roll of Kodak Ektachrome E100VS Vivid Saturation, which expired in 2014. I can't explain it, but I do know this. Slide film is great. Even the shots from this long dead film are great, which leads me to think that had this been a fresh new slide film, the shots would be damn near stunning, even with a ham-fisted brainless sack of oatmeal like me holding the camera. This lesson has taught me that maybe next vacation I'll consider bringing nothing but new slide film and see how we do. The operative word in that sentence, of course, being new. Lesson number four, one camera only, please. Lesson number four is similar to lesson number two. There's nothing better for creating great photos than have a perfect understanding of the camera in your hands. I don't care what camera it is. If you don't know how to use it fast and without conscious thoughts, your photos will be bad or at least not as good as they could be. I've written articles before about how to cheat at film photography, and the biggest cheat is to use a camera that gets out of your way and lets you focus on making the photo. That's what I did on this vacation, for the most part. I brought my favorite camera, the one that I use when I want to make a good photo, the one that feels just perfect in my hands and does everything that I need. There were no instances during the trip in which I was looking down at the camera in my hands, wondering how to make it do this or that. I never accidentally shot in the wrong mode, never accidentally forgot to set the ISO, never picked the wrong shutter speed or aperture, and I never took a photo with the lens cap on because lens caps are for nerds and I didn't I didn't use one also it's a it's an SLR so it would be really hard to not notice if the lens cap was on the camera just worked which in turn allowed me to just work and more importantly it allowed me to take pictures fast so that I could get back to having fun with my kids and my wife when picking your next camera eschew complication and style and instead use the camera that just works for you lesson number 5 the final lesson 2020 was uh, not a great year. Despite a positive attitude and a generally forward-marching personal philosophy, I suffered major setbacks. I won't complain or repeat what I've written about in articles previously, and I acknowledge that plenty of other people have had a harder time recently than I have. But I'd be lying if I pretended that the past year wasn't a killer. Political upheaval in the country where I live, natural disaster, societal unrest, doom and death and end of days, a chilled bag of misery intravenously drip-fed into us by a destructive industrial news complex where numbers mean everything, conflict means clicks, and bad news sells big ads. And all of that turmoil somehow harder to take during an isolating pandemic which replaced family and friends with the cold, unfeeling screens of our computers and phones. Worse than all of that, for me and my wife at least, was a jarring personal loss. It's easy to lose sight of what matters in life with the crowding crush of the world relentlessly pressing in from all sides upon our own tiny lives. And when the strength to push back leaves us, when we're tired and sad and depleted, it sometimes feels like there's nothing we can do except to be crushed under the weight. We suffocate or we find some strength and push back. This vacation, one where I took 360 odd photos, 70 of which might be sort of decent, has helped me push back on the saddest year of my life. The trip was a magical time. The photography, a hobby which I've not engaged with in any real capacity in over a year, was fresh and useful. And looking through these photos for the first time last night reminded me of a lesson I've known for years but had nearly forgotten. The final lesson learned shooting my vacation on film. Photography is good, and family is everything. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. You can follow Casual Photophile on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can follow me, James, the guy who wrote and recorded this, on Twitter and Instagram. I'll put the links to all of that in the show notes, and you can see the original article there as well. I'm James from Casual Photophile. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you in the next one.